Okay, before I start today's Retro Bat Super Can Setup Guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide, plus it really helps out my channel too, for which I'm really always grateful for. So we're looking at a mysterious folder today in your ROMs folder, and that's Supracan. So what was Supracan? It was a Taiwan console, pretty much a 16-bit, and it released it at era, the mid-1990s, where we had the rise of N64, the first PlayStation in Sega Saturn, and pretty much this console failed because it was a 16-bit, and the games looked very dated at the time. So anyways, we're gonna get you set up with this stage. So what do we need? We're gonna need some games. Now, there's around 12 games in the entire library of this system, and bear in mind, it was commercially available for around a year in Taiwan. I've got a few games just here, and this is going to accept games in .bin, and .zip as we can see I've got just here. We're also going to need a BIOS file. This is supracan.zip. What we're going to do is go to the RetroBat shortcut, open file location, into the BIOS folder, and the supracan.zip, if I just open this, it should look like this inside, internal underscore 68k.bin and umc6650. Dot bin. So what we're going to do with this, without it stratting, it's just drag that BIOS supracan.zip inside of the RetroBat BIOS folder. It doesn't need to go inside of a folder, it can just go in like I've just done just there. Next thing we're going to want to do then is obviously put the games into place. So we're going to scroll down to the ROMs folder and in here we're going to just scroll down to the S section and we're going to find supracan. Here we go. So we're going to go into the games and we're just going to drag and drop those games inside of that Supracan ROMs folder. And next up, we're going to open up RetroBat. Okay, so if you've done this correctly, we should find mess. You're not going to see Super I Can, so what we can actually do to get rid of mess is if we press the start button just here, go down to game collection settings, systems displayed. If we just uncheck mess and make sure this is enabled, which it is, Super I Can, if I press back, here we go, awesome stuff. So if we go inside of this folder, Here's the games, let's just download some artwork. So main menu, down to scraper, scraper settings, and I'm just gonna set up what I prefer. So box 3D, uh, I'm gonna leave everything checked there. I'm gonna enable fan art, and I'm gonna enable map, and just pop in my screen scraper, username and password. Okie dokes, once that's done, down to back, and I'm gonna go to systems included, make sure super can is checked, and we're gonna go to scrape now. Okay, game settings and update game list, yes. Okay, so Screen Scraper isn't actually scraping any artwork, so we're going to do something else. We're going to go down to Scraper again. This time, we're going to try the game's database. Scrape, and nothing from that. So, it's a good likelihood if you do play around with Scraper settings and change the Scraping database, you'll likely come across something at some point. What we could actually do is just go to main menu, user interface settings, theme configuration, and if I change the game list view style to say automatic, So at least we got a preview video there for a couple of games. But anyways, what we are going to do is press select button on controller to view options, advanced system options, emulator. Now by default, this is going to run from RetroArch Libretro MAME Core. We've also got MAME64. Now just remember that 
these two emulators are going to perform very differently. So in some cases, one game might perform well with the Retro MAME, whereas another game might run better with MAME 64. If that's your case, then you can actually set these games up per game to run from one particular emulator. For example, if I go to Journey to the Laugh, if I hold my A button on my Xbox controller down, I can go to Advanced Game Options just here, and I can set this up to run, for example, from MAME64, whereas the other games will run by default. Another way to potentially get some artwork for these is again by holding down the A button per game, scrape, and sometimes you're going to get a little list of titles for that game come up. So just here we can see Super Dragon Force. If I just hover over each one of these games, we've actually got preview videos from, but we don't have the artwork, which is a little bit annoying. But like I say, if you hold onto the A button per game and go to scrape, like I say, in some cases you'll have a list of games listed and then you just scroll through them and pick out the game you want. It's also a potential that if we go to edit this game's metadata on each game, if we go to name just here, should your games have a really bizarre naming convention, just spell it out correctly and then go down to save and then go to scrape. Okay, so let's open up some games and see performance. Now, I'm just going to tell you that prior to recording this video, the games I did test out, they seem to actually work better with the main 64 Super Cam. Which means once we're in game, we can actually press the tab button on keyboard to bring up this main menu. So it looks like Boom Zoo is actually some kind of Bomberman clone, but let's try something else out. Again, what I'm going to do is actually use the main 64 Super Cam. And of course, we got some settings here, uh, such as visual rendering. Uh, we got BGFX video filter, and we got other video options there to mess around with. And it's always, if you don't see any visuals, just go down the driver's video and try changing over your video back ends by auto. This seems to be running for me fine with uh, D3D. So anyways, let's open up for Moza Jewel. Okay, so it looks like for me it was a draw with some kind of Tetris type Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine type game. A horrendous sound on that and my controller doesn't seem to be working. So we're going to go over to Journey to the Laugh this time. And you'll notice when I'm loading each one of these up, it does say there are no problems with this system, but like I say, having said that, some of these games might work fine with the Retro Arch main core.
So with that game, I'm getting no controller input. So we could try to go into view options, advanced system options. Under control, we're gonna find lots of different control options just here. Uh, we got controller profile. We could go maybe to game specific. Uh, but like I say, some of these games, if not all these games using MAME64, does say that some of these games aren't working too well. So we're gonna give it another shot. Uh, we got Monopoly Adventure in Africa. Uh, all of this is in uh, Taiwan. I'm not going to bother trying that one. Uh, we got Sango Fighter. And Sango Fighter appears to be working fine, and I think it's just by seeing that game, which is pretty obvious why this uh, console failed in the first place. I mean, uh, as you can see, pretty much uh, below Super Nintendo video uh, style graphics and even Mega Drive. So, uh, anyway, Son of Evil, let's take a look at this one. It looks like an RPG. And Son of Evil using MAME64 doesn't appear to have any video on that. Uh, next up we got Speedy Dragon. <laughs> As we've seen just there, Speedy Dragon doesn't appear to be running too good, which is really unfortunate because that's my style of game, absolutely. So, we're going to go to Super Dragon Force.
And we've got absolutely nothing for Super Dragon Force. So what I'm going to do is try using a different emulator for this. So advanced game options. And I'm going to try opening this one with MAME64. And absolutely nothing here. So, like I say, we can actually change the video driver. So, if we go again to advanced game options for this one, if we just go down to drivers, I'm going to attempt putting this one on to say OpenGL. And absolutely nothing. And finally, we got a baseball league game. So, I'm going to just go to advanced game options and I'm going to run this from MAME64, like I was saying, most games I have tested, as you've seen, have been running partially okay, but not brilliant with MAME64. And black screen for this one, so I'm gonna give this one another go with Libretro Meme. So as we can see, this particular game is booting using RetroArch. But unfortunately, we've got a black screen for this now. And that's it then for today's RetroBat and SuperCan setup guide for Windows PC. So like I say, some of these games are very much hit and miss. And that includes the artwork scraping too. So anyways, if you're new to my channel and you're not aware, I've got an entire playlist for RetroBat setup guides. I'll pin that in my comments section. I've got two playlists for RetroBat, actually a help playlist as well as a general system setup guide. Plenty of content there for RetroBat fans. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit the notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also, check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.